did. <clears throat> I got about three quarters of the way through it. Anybody else have a chance to look, or if you want a chance to look at it? Yeah, I'm not so done yet either. You want to take a minute to finish going through it? Yep. Okay. You don't mind? Yeah, I apologize for me in late there. Chris. Okay. Anybody else? Anything on there? We just we had one discussion before the meeting started about that Clean Water Act fee from the state. If you can just find out if that's annual per well or what we no, get. No, I can get, get more that. details if you're interested. I suspect it's probably annual. We have a number of annual fees that we pay, including like the sign fees off of Highway 57, electronic sign fees annual as well. Sure. And we pay a number of quarterly assessments to the state for our electric as well. Um, they just calculate the kilowatts sold, and we pay based on that. So. Okay. Perfect. Any other questions or comments on the consent agenda? I did just have one thing I wanted to highlight under yep. evaluation. So you do have Jessica's uh, letter in there in the consent agenda. Um, you know, she and I did have a probationary review. Um, so I did consider extending her probation, um, but we opted not to do that this time. But I, I you know, I, I do once you know that I'm, you know, I'm trying to make sure that she's getting things done in a timely fashion and, and it's uh, been a steep learning curve for her. So some of the things, obviously, with, with Linda being out too, I've been covering some other things as well. But um, that's one I'm just going to be watching real closely and, and hopefully it continues to, you know, improve. So. Okay. All right. I a motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll make the motion. Thanks, Mel. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thanks, Paul. All in favor say aye. Oh, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, public forum. Nope, I don't have any cards. Uh, number one, the committee reports, planning and zoning, the center conditional use permit variance, and the jewel conditional use permit. Ian. So I'll talk about the, the jewel CUP first. Um, that's for a fence, by the way, on the property lines or closer than three feet to the property lines. Um, there was a bit of an issue there that came up with an encroachment by the neighbor's property. Um, essentially what happened there was that they had an addition built onto their garage. And through the course of doing this fence project, they found that they did a survey and found that the property line actually somewhat goes through the neighbor's garage. Um, so we talked about it during the planning commission meeting and one option that we discussed was putting in a condition of approval for the CUP that the neighbors would come to some sort of agreement such as coming up with an easement to allow for continued uh, use of the property. Um, however, they also, the planning commission also guided me to consult with the city attorney about that uh, third condition there. Um, so, Melanie, if you would like to share your thoughts on it, you're welcome to. Sure. Um, my concern about that third condition is, so it's my understanding that the individuals who are asking for the fence now are the property owners that have been encroached upon, right? Correct. It's my understanding that that encroachment has been there for a long time, early 2000s, 2006 right? 2006 it was. <laughs> um, I, 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 it doesn't feel great that we're asking these folks who've already been encroached upon to, to fix it before they can build a fence. Um, but I, there is, there is, 
I understand why the city this is an issue and it would we would love to see it cleaned up so but, but we don't want to have to be the ones that does it right we don't we want them to to work this out um, I, I, I legally I don't see an issue with third condition um, I think it might be a bit these kinds of um, cases can take a long time to work out those property disputes and it's a it's going to need a you know unless they can reach a verbal agreement they're going to need a court order that says this is where the boundary line is because it, that encroachment has been there for so long I think that could take them a really really long time to get those are my concerns my or my thoughts they were there and the neighbors were there at the meeting and they were talking like it was no big deal to them they wanted if i'm wrong it didn't seem like they were had kind of agreed in the audience that that was a good thing to do and just to be done with it but that's the, the only, they didn't even seem concerned that it had been that many years they just that's kind of how i took it from them but I mean, it would be nice if they would just, like you say, talk and, mm -hmm. but part of the, we just thought as the zoning, it was nice that if they had an agreement, so there wasn't a future problem down the road, and why did we allow this fence and. Yes, I, yeah. So we're, re with this we're, third condition, we're requiring them to get a recorded instrument, and you're saying that could take a very long time to get, even if they're amicable. Uh, if they're amicable, it shouldn't take that long. Okay. So if they're amicable. Which should be an issue. If they are, are. Yeah. Then it shouldn't take long. Cause otherwise, they couldn't. This wouldn't go into effect until they did do that condition, correct? Yep. Okay. And I, I mean, if it, if if things turn contentious, they could always come back and ask. Hey, yeah, you know, um, that was those. Like I said, I don't think there's any anything illegal about it and it does clean up an issue and I can understand why we want to get those kinds of issues addressed um, those are my only thoughts okay so. the people that bought it there's a I think they said there's a second or third owner and they didn't know until the people that wanted to fence in found out they were on their property nobody knew Neither, yeah, neither of the two property owners knew this until knew it because they they weren't there when the, the encroachment happened. Yeah, just how they know it. They just know it. That's what it is right now. I think how because one of their neighbors came over and told them. <laughs> told them because and there was That's a miscommunication nice when they drew the plans up. One said it was 88 feet, and one said it was. And then come to find out, the lot's 80 feet or something. Is the fence going to be located along part of what's in dispute? Yes. If, I don't know if you got a p file in there under F1. If you scroll to the, there's a picture there. Tim could probably bring it up on the screen there. Is it in your staff report? That's in the staff yep. report. Yep. Yeah. All right. Looks like the back edge. So if you look, you can see the property line is right on the, uh, part of the driveway is in it. And part of the garage, and just barely part of the garage. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it's right along the edge. Right of the along the kind of right there. The overhang of the garage, really. And their fence wants to go up next near that, and which the person that wants the fence is the one that's being encroached upon. I mean, we just thought it was as zoning that would be yeah, cleaned I, up. I, it's a good idea to get things cleaned up. Well, if they're amicable, would be a if good thing to do. That. And that's kind of the way it looked at the meeting but it's hard to you know we weren't discussing that with well them. we'll find out I mean yeah. no, if they want to do what they want to do they, they have to meet the condition and if they do it then it's taken care of for the event that one of them sells to somebody else and they do have a problem with it it's there it's recorded it's done it's done yeah. Yeah. so take the opportunity I guess to let them work it out amicably hopefully and if they don't then they can't do it so mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anything else you have on that or no. suggestion or um, yeah, You know, the, the, we're also requiring them to have an access easement agreement with, the, with both property owners if, if they want to do it on the fence. So I, 
which is also fine. Um, and and in this situation, perhaps a bit redundant with that one owner, but I I don't have any other thoughts. Okay, thank you. Ian, anything else? No. Okay. Any discussion on the resolution? To me, if it helps clean it up and they can do it amicably and then they get it cleaned up, that's great for them and future owners versus letting one of them sell and then it's a foreign and legal issue down the road for and more work for the attorney. So, all right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the resolution. I'll make that motion. Thanks, Dan. Do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Thanks, Paul. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution passes. Thank you. Uh, PNZ update from committee. Yeah, I did have a couple of other things to talk about there. So at the Planning Commission, we also discussed a request by the Center household for a CUP and a variance. Uh, also for a fence here on the property line, that's the reason for the CUP. Um, but the variance request was because they're requesting to put their fence in what's considered a front yard. It's mm -hmm. a corner lot, and so we consider uh, <laughs> corner lots to have two front yards and two side yards. Um, so where they're proposing to build their fence would be a that would be a front yard, but it's essentially a, the equivalent of a side yard, if not for that where the road is. Um, so what the planning commission decided to do was to table their decision until the next meeting in August, and during that time, um, we've also recommended that we take a look at amending the zoning ordinance in order to make some sort of exception to the rule where you can't have a fence with over 50% transparency in a front yard. Um, so that's, that's where I met with that one. Okay. And we've also had a discussion about the city's noise ordinance as directed by the council in response to the event comments request by the American Legion. Um, uh, largely the planning commission was in consensus that the process should remain the same uh, as it is where if someone wants to have an event or create loud noises <laughs> as part of an event, they go through the process where the council can review it and then if necessary, you know, emergency services are notified, that type of thing. Um, in my review of the code, I found that the times there are actually 11.30 uh, p.m. to 7 a.m. where noises are considered for parties and gatherings. Um, so. We did discuss a few complaints that have come up about noise about events downtown, and one idea that the Planning Commission had was to somehow notify residents that an event is taking place, um, whether that's by providing letters or putting it on our city newsletter that we send out with utility bills or simply adding it to our city website or on Facebook, that type of thing. So that was the discussion on that topic. Any questions for Ian? No, I'd just say that if, if you're talking particularly where the apartment building is directly over where the gathering or potential noise violation is going to be, then sending letters to the residents is probably your better path, as opposed to just hoping they see it on Facebook. Because they may also not get this. I don't know what the utility situation is there, so I don't know if they get the city newsletter in the individual units. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. <coughs> um, number three, the EMS committee re review of the ATV policy. Sure. Uh, including your packet, you've got a, uh, a draft uh, red line copy of the uh, write-up. So at our last meeting, we had a resident who came in, a couple of residents, and presented about some concerns they had on um, ATVs, UTVs, that sort of thing coming through private property. and. As a result, the uh, council referred that issue to the, uh, the MS committee, which met last week uh, to discuss it and uh, had a good discussion, a uh, thorough discussion, I think, and appreciate the, the police chief's feedback there and the other committee members. Um, so in your, your copy here, you have uh, some changes that were grand. Uh, we, we, we discussed basically um, some corrections from when the code was originally written, um, some updates, and then uh, there's one more in here that the police chief had that I did not add in earlier. So under number four, it would say uh, 
uh, permits may also be granted for a shorter period of time. Uh, read it how he's got it worded here. Um, he's looking at the Big Iron Classic in particular. Um, he, he would add under number four, right now it reads, permits shall be granted for a period of 36 months and may be renewed. Uh, he would suggest the language permits may be granted for a period of one to 36 months and may be renewed. That would allow, uh, enable the, the Big Iron Classic to be permitted properly but not um, require them to pay the same level of fee cost that would be for a three-year permit. Obviously, that wouldn't be necessary for them. So other than that, so like I said, we have some, we have some <coughs> changes there, some cross-outs. Um, we have some uh, red line additions. Mini truck was added in a couple spots where it wasn't previously noted. Um, so uh, I think these were the suggested changes from EMS, and, and if there's any questions, I'd certainly take those, or the members of the EMS can discuss it as well. I got, just have one thing. I could had a phone call today from somebody who was going through the packet on the very last thing where it has the no, no motorized golf carts, that type of thing, mm -hmm. about the main street. Mm -hmm. They were just asking if we could change the word from traverse to something else because traverse would mean you couldn't even cross it because mm. you, you wouldn't be, be allowed on it at all. Actually, specifically means they wouldn't be able to cross it, doesn't it, Mel? It means they... Traverse. Yeah, as opposed to... I think the they idea is that, that yeah, right, exactly. The idea is they don't want them traveling on Main Street, right. but they could cross it. Right. So they were just right. curious of, I had to look up in the dictionary to make sure that it was. I mean, it says <laughs> drive for Highway 57, 34, and 21. We could just say drive Main Street like the other ones. Yeah. So what was the, was the intent there that you can't drive on Main Street or you can't cross it? That was it? the intention. Yeah. So, yeah, so obviously, yeah, this is, I mean, it's red line, so of course we can yeah. we can change the draft for anything we need to and, and add different language in. But Just so they'll be able um, to cross I think it. the idea was that, um, yeah, you, you'd, you might be able to cross it, but you wouldn't be able to drive along it. Right. I think maybe I added that in because it sounded like it was getting a monotonous saying drive, drive, drive again. again, again. Was like, <laughs> no, they were just but making sure. Now that, that I look at that, I see you're right. You know, it's very accurate <laughs> to say that travel across or through is what traverse means. So I should not have used that in that case. So, yeah. no, very. I was trying for a good. Uh, there's some other words I took out here. I had propitious in here someplace, and I took that out because <laughs> I was like, that's over the top. They're going to be laughing at me. So, no, but I guess the thought process was, in our old code, so the EMS looked at the old code that went from 2004, which was when it was originally signed, Dwayne was mayor and, and uh, Mike was here as the admin, and it went through till 2018 when this was updated originally. And at that point in time, they actually had a number of streets where it was eliminated. You weren't supposed to drive on, and it actually had streets that you could drive on. So originally it was kind of like the, uh, the snowmobile routes. But in, that last, in the last five years, we've just seen this you know, kind of boom in number of golf carts, ATVs, that it just has sure. become much more uh, manifest. So um, so that's why they did feel like, and I mean, of course that can be changed. So what they've got in there right now is um, Main Street uh, between 8th, so kind of, you know, where it passed the clinic basically, past the library there, to 1st, so sort of the, the downtown core, and then uh, 57, we don't want anybody on there, 34 or, or 21, basically going north out of city limits. So those are the roads where they would limit it. Of course, County 21, as we've discussed that as a trail section, so we wanted to make sure that we didn't have a, an issue where, you know, 8th Avenue would have people trying to walk and also have, have, have vehicles. So, um, so, but those can be, those, we can amend those certainly too. So, no, I have no problem with any of that. Since the last meeting, I've been just kind of paying attention to all these vehicles, and it states in here you have to have a license and insurance and all that. I've seen... 75% of these vehicles that I saw were driven by kids with no adult in it or there was an adult with the kids sitting on their lap and the kid was driving it down the city street at high speed. Sure. And I mean, I think that probably goes to the police so, chief and enforcement more than anything else. But I think, you know, if we keep adding to this, we need to start not warning people anymore. We literally need to start writing the tickets. They all had ample time. No more, well, I didn't know, too bad. Because it's only going to get worse if we keep doing it. And it, I mean, 75%, and I saw over 20 different vehicles. And it wasn't just golf carts. It was the UTVs. It was, it was everything. And it was the kids driving them. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I think that uh, one thing that EMS talked about that we certainly will push is no notifying people. You know, so once this update would be done, we would definitely be pushing it out on social media. And so then... After that is done, then, I mean, there certainly isn't any excuse for people not having good knowledge of it. I mean, realistically, you give them this information when they come and get their license, or the police department does, I and mean, Josh may not handle that, but um, so they really have no excuse already. But I know that they talked about it at EMS, it's really pushing out, kind of like we did with the, uh, the licensing and the, the leashes with the pet pets, mm -hmm. putting that out so that, 
because we do have a lot of new people in town who may not know the rules or may not yeah. remember it. They took the file and they threw it in a, the garbage probably uh, after they got it. I wish it wasn't the case, but. I mean, um, or do they just see other people driving and don't well, know they need a license? Right. right. Yeah, and you do that. I mean, because I mean, when it comes to now the fairgrounds and during fair and during the Big Island Classic, a lot of them guys like to drive on the bike paths and all that and heavily. And there's usually people walking, you know, because it's a busy time and so well, it's gotten way out of hand up there for that. With Big Iron Classic, one of the things we specifically mentioned was including a copy of the code section yep. in the information that Big Iron passes out. Yep. And my understanding is they also rent golf carts to their participants, so it's included in the yep. paperwork that they give so that everyone cannot say, no one can say, oh, I don't It was know. much better last year when it we started. was, well, yeah. Better than it was. It's not perfect. But no, but I know they were actually... Big, uh, we're patrolling the exits and reminding people and having them t dump their drinks out and because <laughs> there's plenty of that too. I mean, because you got kids working there parking cars and you don't need that extra. But, but yeah, I, I agree. It was definitely better. This is good. I like. So okay. I got a couple well, things I'd yeah, I want to comment on. One. Um, I noticed down here at the bottom in, oh, where are we? It just says C. Uh, which section staff? Way down at the bottom where it talks about city staff and, and change the government staff. Sure. You crossed out sidewalks and trails. That's right. Which means I assume they, you know, were permitted to drive on sidewalks and trails, but now we're not going to allow that? Well, so this was part of a discussion that was had directly related especially to the school. The school staff utilizing um, some of their so currently, from what I was uh, been, I've been told, the school doesn't license their vehicles, ATVs, golf carts, that sort of thing, even though they're utilizing them. So we want them to get licensed. We want them to be permits. So that's why we added the the permitted section in there, and we also changed it from city staff to government staff. We don't want to restrict the school if they want to use their vehicles, or if uh, the county needs to for some reason use something along those lines. They, you know, the sheriffs have got some different. Uh, you mentioned that you know you sometimes use those too, um, and then. Uh, we did cross off sidewalks and trails because we, I think the EMS felt like sidewalks in particular are pedestrian only, um, bicycles and pedestrian, okay. primarily but pedestrian, and then trails as well were pedestrian intended for pedestrians. Except for the Dodge County Trail, because that has, because the county owns the Sunrise Sunset Trail, not the city, and they have a sign that says Dodge County authorized personnel on motorized vehicles on their trail. Sure. And I don't know that that would be an issue because they'd it'd be their own trail. But, right. but yeah, right. I think that the intention was to, to eliminate some of the sections in town where people, for example, like our new trails that we've extended with the safe routes, yes. uh, for example, that, you know, I, I think that was the intention from what I, may, I recall, at least from the EMS members. Correct. But but when, so I think that's all good. But if you go to A1, sidewalks is still allowed, which means that the public would be allowed to use the sidewalks. So I think that needs to be crossed out too. No person shall operate on streets, alleys, sidewalks, or other public property. Without a permit. Yep. So if you remove sidewalks out of there. Sure. <laughs> no, that's cer certainly, I mean, when I read through it, I probably just, you know, didn't make the change there, too. I, and but I, I think that can. was one of the things that we did say at that meeting was that it should come out there. But, okay. yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm because because that implies that with a permit, you can use a sidewalk. Correct. Sure. <laughs> All right, so we'll remove that sidewalks from uh, the sidewalks from the section <coughs> on the public so property. So I didn't alleys or other public property. Yes. So when the school, because they maintain that trail along the stadium across from Normandy all the way to the high school, right? And they plow it with an ATV. They blow the snow with an ATV. Mm -hmm. You're saying here they can't be on the sidewalks or the trails with a with an ATV or a UTV. Well, he's just asking them to permit it. That's all he's asking. Them. No, but it no. says here that it's oh. crossed out. You yeah, we crossed out sidewalks. I, my okay. personal thing is any government staff that needs to be on those for any reason should be able to be on there. I can say when we see the school, you need to be permitted. Sure. But so what do you guys suggest as an alternate language there? Just leave the sidewalks and trails open for governmental staff if they uh, have. Well, see, they're only on there. If, if you're authorized may, authorized government staff may operate permitted motorized carts, UTVs on city streets. Oh, all right, but right. we're off the trail. So, right. so then the the change for that should perhaps be authorized government staff may operate permitted 
motorized golf carts, ATVs, UTVs, and mini trucks within the city when conducting official business. Yeah. Cross yeah. out everything. Yeah, like okay. Between. That maybe would simplify it a little bit even more. Sure. I can see that. And still requirement to be permitted. I have yeah, a problem yeah, no, with that. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. So, so we would just say within the city uh, when conducting official business. Right, right. The yeah. idea behind behind the change that we made there was, again, the whole monkey see, monkey do. Well, yeah. he's doing it. Why can't I? Right. But if it's going to create a, a direct conflict, particularly as pertains to the maintenance of the the, si the trail, then... The school does do that, don't they? They plow below that. Yeah, I see Christian, and then Christian the out there doing that. Equipment equipment for that. And the city does it, too. Yeah. The, the government, all the government equipment, though, is, is clearly labeled as it's government, you know, city-owned, city of Casson or Casson School District or something, right? Some of it we own all together. Yeah, it's a joint, joint venture. Might not have, but they, they're all still identified as right. one huge entity. But if, you, but if you saw this thing driving by on the sidewalk, you'd see that it's a government vehicle. Yeah, most likely. I mean, I guess the realistic, the, the, I think the, what the EMS was looking at is not so much snow removal, because obviously that's right. a little different situation. But it's, we don't want to utilize like golf carts on the trails typically. Right. Like, mm -hmm. We don't want, like you talked about kids driving, maybe they feel more comfortable on the sidewalk. Well, you've got a pedestrian walking down a trail, you've got a, a golf cart coming at them, that is uh, not going to be feasible. So I think that was the gist of the conversation. But I appreciate the feedback, because yeah, so I can make that change in A1. So we'll, we'll clarify that, and then we'll clarify that section that you, you mentioned, Mr. Mayor, about that. Just removing that. Yeah, just to make sure. I just think anybody... vehicle, we, we let them use Whether it's city or school or yep. county, if they have yep. things to do, they should Oh, that makes it. sense. And then the only other, I guess, question I have is we're not including the motorized bicycles. Well, we did go, talk about that briefly. They go 42 but miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did talk about that briefly, but it wasn't covered <coughs> under this code originally, so we certainly can add that as an amendment if we'd like to. And my only question is this. I have nothing against them, obviously, right. but you can't drive a golf cart on the trail to get to the golf course. But when I went for a walk three weeks ago, I got buzzed by three people on the motorized bikes going about 40 miles an hour. Now, well, do we, so we don't license those, do we? Do we license? No, I'm just saying that we're going to allow uh, are those considered a motorized vehicle well, being on a sidewalk or a trail. So, question one: Are bikes allowed on sidewalk under our code as it is? Technically, they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be on the street. Technically. So that technically okay. is the answer to the question there. Okay. If a bike's not even supposed to be there, I was on the pedals. sunrise or trail, or whatever. Yeah, the other thing is, you got sidewalks and you have trails too, right? Shared use trails, which are supposed right. to be used by bikes. So yeah, on, bikes. on bikes on trails, yes. So bikes should be on the trails. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we're <coughs> differentiating. I mean, if we're looking at safety, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, Especially a golf now. cart only goes, you know, 12 or 14. Right. A normal golf cart, <laughs> not the ones these guys are buying for their garages that are go <laughs> go 50. But a normal golf cart that you would take to the golf course is a 15 miles an hour tops. You get a good one. But you get a bike that, that And then yeah, you get a maybe. bicycle that can do uphill, not so much. Do 30 or 42 40. miles an hour. Well, so I mean, I guess me. that is a good question about the motorized bike. So, like, that's licensed through the state, right? Or how's that licensed? No, it's a no, bicycle. No, license. It's just an electric or. It's electric bike. Electric yeah. There's no. You can pedal it or you can. <laughs> so, maybe do we want to add that pedal. into a, as a special vehicle here someplace? I don't I'm know. not trying to muddy the wires. I'm just looking it up. Sure. Well, but I mean, you know, that, that is something that, you know, I've seen. Uh, and especially, I've seen some relatively but small children on, you know, motorized bikes before that are going probably a lot faster than they should be with no helmet, no anything. The question, I, we talked about that, and the reason that we decided to leave bikes out is because are you going to tell a 12-year-old that got that new bike for Christmas that they can't drive it because they don't have a driver's license? Right. True. So for yeah. this code section, I we leave decided it, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go yeah. there. And, and it's why we left out riding lawnmowers, because are right. you going to tell... The twelve-year-old that started his own lawn mowing business and is borrowing dad's lawn mower that he can't drive it to get from job A to job B. So we left that out as well. Lawn mowers don't go forty, though, do they? No. No. <laughs> you can drive a not tractor all the, and not all the box. twenty-five to thirty. No, but I've seen some pretty good videos of guys that have lost their license for DUI that are driving their own lawn mower down <laughs> to the package store down yeah. south. It's so. motorized. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's leave it like it is then. Okay. Anything else? Did you have anything all right. else? My second point was okay. is that this is all great, but it doesn't really do anything for the complaint we had at the last meeting, right? Because well, the complaint was about enforcement, no, not about... It says not a personal property without... We, yeah, we did add that to clarify a little bit more. Of the owner. Yep. But 
Right. So you mentioned earlier, though, Dan, is that, that this is all great, but if we don't do any enforcement, it's not going to make much difference, right? Mm -hmm. So are we going to put this out in the next city newsletter and start enforcing in August? Or, I mean, what's... Yeah, I mean, I'd like to put it out, I mean, as soon as the council would approve it, potentially at the meeting on the 26th. We would plan on starting to, to publicize it more, possibly even before that. Um, but you know that addition to section 10, I think I felt at least gives the you know so you know making it very clear that gives the police the ability to cite somebody for trust using that section saying yep okay. you know, that's what it is, you know so I guess that's a that's an enforcement issue. So I don't know, Josh, if you have got any feedback for for Councilman Johnson on that, you'd have to tell us like when the violations are occurring. Right. Um, who have evidence that they're doing it and something you maybe that's a video. You're welcome to park in my driveway and watch them drive up and down 57 if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the stop sign violations, but we sit there all day, they don't roll over there to the Right. Violence. So you have to be able to see it. But, but if you see it, we... We think more Yes, and we hope that, you know... But also, man. having the code section amended the way that it is would allow Mr. Paulson to put signage on his property that says pursuant to city code blah. Yeah. I mean, he could also say no trespassing and that kind of covers it too, doesn't it? But it does this is more it, specific. But yeah, but if, if he can cite to a code section, then that probably has a little more teeth to it to the person that is driving through his corner mm -hmm. lot. Right. I think the conversation too with, with uh, EMS, we did feel like hopefully with the Completion of the Highway 57 project that will improve some situ you know some oh, yeah. situ I mean, unfortunately, we can't fix every problem that comes up. We just provide the tools for law enforcement to enforce it very directly, very clearly. And if they can catch somebody, then they can say, "Hey, this is what it is." There's no you know un or buts about it. In his situation, like uh, we're going to do the best we can to support him and try and help him. It isn't necessarily going to be a perfect solution for him. I think we just have to all realize that. Is this number 10 with the added part? You've got a few people that go to the grocery store in the morning to have their morning coffee, and they're in ATVs. Are they now going to have to have written permission from hy to do that? That's up to hy Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's up to the property owner to make a complaint. Okay. So if they complain, then they have to get, yeah, okay. If they don't care, then it's fine, because we have someone come complain, but we also have a business that's completely okay with it, yeah. because they're just there to get coffee. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nobody's cutting through hy to get anyway, right? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think up there would be no way to yeah. cut through. I mean, it's, parking it's like any, like Chief was saying, I, mean, I, I watch people run stop signs all, all oh. day at the four-way stop, but, but unless you're sitting there, you're not going to catch them. Yeah. And then how much mundane do work do we want to say, hey, stop every golf cart you see that's breaking the rules, and now you're not doing right. the other things you need to be doing. I mean, but I think it needs to be enforced, but I think we need to help the people that are doing it and following the rules can help enforce it because I've told three people this week who saw this in the agenda and they're worried about it. I said, well, if you're worried about it going away, you need to see when you see the group of kids next door, go talk to their parents and say, stay off the road or we're all going to lose our privilege. I mean, and, yeah. And I think if you ticket a couple that are right. definitely doing it, maybe that word will get around too. It'll spread. It'll spread and then they will, you know, especially when you see, I don't know how old this kid was. I'm guessing seven years old, driving the golf cart, and the parent was sitting in the passenger side, and the parent can't get a DUI that way. <laughs> Over <Hold the> bottle. <laughs> anyway, you can text on your phone in the passenger seat. Right? Good work. <laughs> you must have yep. Yeah. So, so you bring wondering. it back for the next meeting with That's the right. stuff with the changes. Yep. All right. And where are you going to add the the red line or the addition at the bottom? Where what section do you think that belongs under? You know, I, I will uh, have to look and see. I mean, to be honest with you, I could just leave it at the bottom and move the ordinance down. It could just be another paragraph. So it might be, you know, a section um, H or something like that under, you know, the, or maybe even to be, a, let's see, maybe I just make an E under, you know, the, 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 the bullets. You know, either that or I could certainly move it up further too. I, that one looks like it mostly deals with mini trucks. So put it right I might top. move it under uh, that section number 12, or no, section, yeah. Section number. I might go A one A. I, I would, yeah, right I in the very first would top. definitely move it to the okay. top. Okay. Well, certainly that's certainly fine. You know, we can move it up under under A one. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing you're going to see. A lot of people ain't going to keep. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. All right. So I've got uh, removing in section A one, removing that on streets, alleys, sidewalks. So it'll just read uh, on uh, without re obtaining a permit is there and provided. 
and then um, we'll move that section from the bottom in the red line. We'll remove Traverse and put Drive and put that under A1 and then A1A. the, uh, what's it? Make it A1A. Sure. Just for clarity. A1A. Okay. And then we can, uh, that section under uh, number 10, that was red line. Let's see, was there any changes to that? Or what was the one that we had one more change? I think we had I on government, sure I the government, government. Uh, sure. And we were going to revise that to say so that's C, just eliminate the sidewalks, the so eliminate sidewalks there and okay. trails, yep. make it in town basically. Okay, so that one would read uh, authorized government staff may operate and permitted motorized golf carts, ATVs, UTVs, mini trucks within the city uh, when conducting official business, correct? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for the feedback. I appreciate Traverse it. on the last one. Yep. <coughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't have my thesaurus out to offer yeah. another alternative. Uh, we'll go on to old business. Uh, number one, the EV charging stations. Council Member Ferris. So I, I brought this back up um, when when Nancy was still here. We had been discussing putting this into the liquor store parking lot as part of the redo of that parking lot with the logic being it's already going to be torn up. It's way easier to run the electricity when the parking lot is torn up rather than call Brandon next year and say, hey, by the way, we forgot something. Um, the other reason that I brought it up, because at the time we were talking about this, there was money coming from that Volkswagen settlement that made it uh, possible that we could get state or federal money or Volkswagen money to pay to put in a level two charger uh, at someone else's expense. We didn't get that. I think Nancy did apply for it. Mm -hmm. But um, within the last three weeks, all Ford has come to an agreement and I can't remember, uh, Rivian has come to an agreement with Tesla that they are going to start using Tesla charging stations, which means they're going to somehow have to adapt to the weird plugs that are unique to Tesla. What that does is open up the market for a lot more cars to use one kind of plug, which eliminates the need for us to get one of the more expensive fancy chargers, which at the time we talked about the fact that getting the charger is ungodly expensive, and then you don't really make any money on the electricity. So I was bringing it back to see if it was something that we could still consider if it's not too late for the liquor store parking lot. Um, and nothing higher at this point than a level two charger, which is the kind that is designed to enable people who are in an area for a couple of hours or three hours to charge up on their way to their next destination. It's more of a, of a convenience. Owatonna is getting a supercharger set for Tesla. Rochester has it, so that is now going to be less of a concern for EV owners, but it is still an amenity that gets us listed on these charger maps that everyone that's driving an electric vehicle can see. So if it's something that we're interested in, I will try to work with Brandon and whoever else is interested in it to explore what our other options are. I've already kind of started talking with uh, the Rochester EV group that is working to try to get the city of Roch to put in a lot more chargers. Um, so I have a little information, but I haven't had a chance to really dive into it, and I'm not an engineer nor a mathematician, and both of those things are required to understand beyond I know I plug it in, it gets charged up, and then I drive my car. So, I think one of the questions that, uh, that came up that I had was about location. Mm -hmm. So liquor store is a potential location. Um, based on my understanding of level two charge, you're going to get between 10 to 20 miles, depending on the type of vehicle, um, per hour. So the question was, you know, is that the best location? I mean, so is someone going to park there, they're going to go and shop for an hour, and they're going to get 20 miles? Is that kind of what you're thinking? That, that based on, and, and the technology cha is changing so fast sure. with this, that when we were first talking about this, God, when did we start talking about the rejuvenation of that parking lot? Has it been it's two, been three years? years? So at the time, that was that was the best location because it is central and it allows people to do, it gives you more options downtown in terms of going and doing things. Um, I know we talked about putting one out here uh, and I saw the comment about putting one at Veterans Park because that's where the ball fields are. That's a great idea in the summertime, 
but as a female who's frequently driving my car by myself, if I need to charge and it's after dark, I am not going to that park unless I live here and know that it's a safe place to go. The idea of sitting in an empty parking lot in the middle of you know, a town I'm not familiar with is not appealing. Sure, I think, and I know I brought that up, I think part of my thought process on that was if you have an EV and you go to a, a kid's ball game or something like mm -hmm. that, or you take your kids to the pool, for example, mm -hmm. That's, then that's, you could, and that's great. Then for you the could summer. park it there. So yeah. I mean, it wasn't necessarily taking away from potential liquor store use to it. It was just maybe an alternate site also. Sure. Let's say maybe you'd put two in. <clears throat> because if you're sitting there for a two-hour ball game or you're sitting there at the pool for three hours, you actually might get a little distance out of sure. it. Sure. And you're right. The technology is getting better. So five years from now, it'll probably be charging even faster than it is now. But sure. my only concern with the liquor store lot is, you know, most of the customer base for the liquor store, for example, ex itself would be very short term. Yep. They're going to pop in for five minutes, go out. Now, if somebody's going to Tammy's for lunch and they want right. to have an EV, they park there, maybe they have an hour. So, I mean, it certainly would be feasible. Um, I know that we've talked about this. At, um, so, yeah, that ZEF settlement, you know, ZEF ended up getting the contract for all that, that diesel money. Um, and That's we the weren't in the, thing and we weren't in the corridor. It was actually western Minnesota that pretty much yeah. took all of it. So we weren't able to take advantage of that. But I know I've talked with Jared. I mean, our, our ability to get one of these chargers is not an issue, whether it's level one or level two. Level two is a little bit more you know, faster, obviously. Level 1s are very cheap. So, you know, potentially if we were going to put one out here, I probably would maybe look at a level 1. I wouldn't even waste the money putting in a level 1 because all it's yeah. going to do in the wintertime is keep you from losing energy. Sure. It's not going to give you any energy. And I was looking at mostly if we had a staff person that was going to utilize it. Because I just be, don't, yeah. I mean, like the number of people that we would have actually, like customers using it here, it's probably infinitesimal sure. number. It's a small number because we have people come and pay their bill and they run back out. So And for yeah. staff, that actually would right. be a good idea. Yeah. Um, but if you were going to do that, then it, it might even be worth just looking at my understanding the difference between a level one and a level two because I have a regular old plug just like that in sure. my garage and that's what I plug into. Right. It takes me 24 to, you know, depending on how hard I'm trying to charge the car. But a dryer plug will get you that mm -hmm. next level which gets you just that much more energy during sure. the day. That's a destination charger. Yeah. Um, and I have read, I will continue to research it, but it looked like at one point if you put in six destination chargers, Tesla would allow you to unlock it and charge for the electricity as opposed to requiring you to give it away for free. So, again, if it's something that people are, are interested in looking at, Otherwise, I don't want to waste Brandon's time or Jared's time or anyone else's time. If it's yeah, not I mean, we do have a couple of partners in our uh, power association, Bluris, for example, that they do have a the Green Giant Museum has a charger where they do you swipe your credit card and you pay for it. And I don't know exactly what kind of a charger it is or what the mechanism is, but they do recover it. And based on what I'm seeing, it looks like a full recharge if your vehicle's range is 300 miles is about 100 kilowatts and would cost between 10 and 14 dollars on average. For us here, yeah, I'd say ten dollars. I, I my my research was eighty percent would be seven dollars and fifty cents with the rate we're presently charging. Sure. So, uh, Quick Trip and Byron has one. Does anybody? No, they don't. <laughs> they have a plug like this. That's what they got. Okay, but I mean they, they have, have an electric. But do you know why they have it? A possibly potentially for an employee, but more realistically, it's because it gets them on that charging map. That's oh, the whole reason that they are putting it. them in. Yeah. That's why I was just wondering what the cost was and. How effective it was because well, I think I've seen costs in. for a level two between seventy five hundred and ten thousand dollars. So I, you know, with this change, the Tesla ones, I don't know how much those will cost. You know, with this new system rollout, but that's what we've seen is that okay. you're able to get the level two. They aren't that expensive, but yeah. And if it's something, the reason that I that I brought it back up, if Tesla is willing to pay for it, depending, you know, on how many spots they would require us to put in, then I'm I'm not opposed to putting it in if that's going to be the, the VHS of the format war, so to speak. Yeah. Still a fan of Betamax. <laughs> <laughs> Not going I've never that. seen a Betamax <laughs> tape in my entire life. <laughs> uh, I can show you one. Um, no, I mean, let, uh, let's look at our options. I mean, it's, it's not going away. I don't know what the parking lot is at. Uh, what on construction next year? So okay, so it's not uh, a, some things. Like, um, Jared may be relocating some electrical as part of that, undergrounding some stuff. So I'm starting to get the ball rolling for next year, and obviously I'm going to do design next year, and we'll bid it here in the spring. Perfect. So if we're going to include sure. parking, I just want to know what we're going to do so we can handle it. So I think maybe we'll so, um, it'll be myself, Jared, and 
Tim and uh, Mel can look yeah, at it I'd and see and move, move it forward and see what the options are for the back. I know Jerry's got some concern with like a level yep. three charger. Yeah. He's yeah. like, no, 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 we can't do that. Like, oh, right. I mean, if please, uh, if whatever. If I can do it, so I just need to work right. that back with him. And, and if there is a program through Tesla where they'll pay for the chargers if we put in certain It's not the ones. charger so much as the issue, it's the infrastructure for it. So, okay. for example, like the charger itself isn't that expensive, but like adding it to a parking lot, we're going to have to run lines in there and we're going to have to pour concrete potentially. That's where a lot of the cost comes in. Right, but I mean, if we can get a yeah, program, because I mean, we get have get several parks, we have a library, right. we have a liquor store, we have several places we could put them. Sure. If they would pay for the chargers, no, that frees up, think about frees up the capital. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like with the parks, that's kind of what I had thought when we and talked about frees up, the library is another good one. And know. it frees up the capital for the infrastructure improvement sure. instead of buying the chargers. If Tesla or whoever will pay for them, yeah. that allows us to charge for electricity rather um, than pay for chargers. Yeah, I'll ask around and see if anybody knows if it has to be six together or if it can oh. be six in different, because that actually would be good if it could be right. six in different locations. Yeah, I mean, we have enough, I mean, Lions Park, Veterans Park, yeah. Library, That would downtown. be great. You know, <coughs> that would make more sense, really, yeah. if we could. Would we have to plow in the winter those park parking lots because we have them there? I don't know, do we currently plow the parking lot? Yeah, the yeah. parking lots are all plowed. Yeah. And how that would work, I mean, I guess Lions, Lions Park and the liquor store, I mean, the actual the, the part of it would probably be in the sidewalk, so it might not affect the actual parking lot itself, but that's something we'd have to look at the engineering aspect of it before we install them. And the thing with the parks, too. Oh, never mind. I want to muddy the waters. <laughs> parks are... Well, vandalism is no matter where you put it, mm -hmm. but don't the parks close at 11 and you can't be in the park after 11? Yeah, I mean, as I said, with, with parks, make an exception for charging. I was mostly looking at people who maybe would be there for a ball game or for the right. pool. I mean, that was what I was More typically looking at. If somebody's yeah. traveling through at midnight in July and say, hey, here's a charger, they could pull in the park and take a snooze for a couple hours and charge their car. Well, I mean, I think that's something that I know our police department would work with them on. I mean, you know, it's, it's, if, if there's charged. a clear reason for doing that, I right. think it probably makes more sense than it. You know, we run into the situation. I think the library had a, a car that was parked there. It was in the report from uh, from Michelle, and and they were it was there for three days. They called the police, and it was somebody it was who abandoned. had just left their car there and gone to a meeting with their boss. Like their boss picked them up there and left, and they thought it was abandoned. Apparently, the vehicle had four flat tires when they picked it up. So it was pretty much, yeah. Anyway, okay, so I get what you're saying. Anyway, I'm of the opinion to go ahead and take a look at it. Take yeah. take what yeah, take a look sure. and see what yeah. the options are. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, dump truck quotes. Sure. Earlier this year in our uh, work session, we discussed um, capital equipment. Um, so a heads up, the fire truck, the long uh, expected fire truck, I'm anticipating going up on the 26th with some fire department members and picking up that truck um, north of the cities there where it's being built. So that's going to be a big ticket item. But also, um, uh, public works director has been working on these, uh, getting quotes and trying to figure out exactly what would work best for them. Um, so there are three in here. Uh, we've got one from NUS, which is a Mac. Um, there is a um, Freightliner, and then there's Western Star. So um, these are the three um, numbers that he's got. Obviously, the Mac is quite a bit higher, so um, we took that out. Um, we're looking at, I think, the recommendation from Charlie is actually to get the Freightliner. Um, so that's 117,675. And that would be before any of the chassis improvements, so like the, the bed and things like that would be added. So total cost for any of these, we'd probably add about forty to $50,000 on in addition. So the Western Star was at 124, and the um, Freightliner was at 118 or so. So I, they're recommending to go with the Freightliner. So this Mac at the top, that this huge list of all these things itemized, those aren't the modifications we would need on it yet? No. No, those are just, that, that's just, the, and I didn't include, I'll be honest, I only included the, the top two pages. There's, I've got the whole packet of each one of these has a whole packet that comes with all the potential. Yeah, because it's got base option of 110, and then it's got all these options, and the, that doesn't even cover the options that we need. Yeah, I mean, I can get you that full packet. I didn't, it was, just it's about 90 pages, so I didn't necessarily think it was important to include huh. that in there, but, um, they are all on state contracts, so that's how it works. Is that you know they run it past a, a state bid, so we'd be buying at state bid. And and Charlie did note that these are all current prices, so we'd probably be adding about five percent onto each one of these two. With it'd be a, a price from next year as well. But he wanted to get order because they're looking at eighteen months to twenty four months even for construction of these. So we'd be buying it, buying it now, potentially not getting it until early in twenty twenty five. 
which is which is still faster than it was a year ago when you looked. I mean, we've actually we're at 30 months right now on the fire truck, so I mean it's been two and a half years almost to to get that. So it's it's a long term. Everything right now is just way backed up. So. Okay. So you're looking for approval on the Freightliner? Yeah, that that's what was recommended from <coughs> Charlie. Okay. Any questions, comments? I know they're in desperate need of a new dump truck, so this this has been in the budget for a while, right? Yeah, I it's think been this has been something we've set aside money for. Yep. Okay. I'll make the motion to go forward with buying the Freightliner. Okay. Thanks, Dan. I have a second. Second. Try and all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, zoning compliance update. All right. So included in your packets, I have just a short memo there kind of describing where we're at with um, complaints specifically regarding Section 51.02 open areas. Um, so far this year, we've had like 10 different properties that I've responded to with letters, which actually compared to the first half of 2022 is fewer. So whether that or not that means people are complaining less or are taking better care of their properties, I don't know, maybe it's an improvement. But with that, um, the council will recall a particular property, um, which has been the site of repeated complaints and in response I've sent repeated letters to this property. Um, but at the last meeting, the council guided me to uh, explore some alternative options that could be explored in order to provide the property owner with some assistance beyond what we know about the property itself. Um, so what I did was I reached out to Amy Evans, who's the, uh, the director of the Dodge County Public Health uh, Department. Um, and so she and I had a rather long discussion about all the different aspects of this particular property and the property owner. Um, and she advised me of a certain route that I could take that could very well offer some support to this particular property owner. So my intention is to pursue that route and see where that goes. And depending upon how that goes, you know, follow up with additional options with that. Perfect. Yeah. Any questions for Ian? Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Yep. All right, uh, new business alcohol sales during festival. Sure. So based on some uh, feedback, the uh, festival committee, um, Christine Purvis, provided us with uh, notice that they uh, have someone who's interested um, in doing some alcohol sales at uh, the city festival. And then she indicated that the festival committee was uh, not opposed to that. So I did reach out after discussing it with some staff. I did reach out, and you've got a memo in your packet as, as well as I do have some information from the League of Minnesota Cities, um, and I will just go through that. Uh, let's see here if I can bring it up for everybody. There's the permit in there, and then there's the re research question that was uh, responded to. So um, they note that a city can authorize on sale intoxicating liquor um, within the, the city festival held by the city, but it must specify um, where it's going to be dispensed and consumed. Um, so typically, you do see that in sort of a beer garden kind of approach where it is screened to a certain de degree. Um, I know that the, um, the wording here is exactly for a space that's compact and contiguous. Um, so I think the uh, festival committee, um, there was a number of people who might have been opposed to fencing it. I recommend that we do have this area fenced. If the, uh, if the council wants to authorize this as part of the city festival in the city park, at least fenced on three sides, I think that that would be a prudent thing. Um, you know, we don't necessarily, um, you know, I certainly don't think we want to restrict. I think having uh, alcohol could be a positive. It could be, a, a, you know, you see that at other city festivals you see in Rochester. It's not uncommon, but I've never been to a city festival where they didn't have it screened to a certain degree. Um, so anyways, it's up to the council what you decide you want to do. Um, you know, it, it you know, like the key, the key is we'll make sure that our, our city um, insurance is covering this as a, you know, I, I just don't want the city to be liable for something where it becomes an issue, so. With with the opposite of the fence, I'm 100% for that, because if you ever, if you don't fence it in, how do you know if somebody brought their own in or did not bring it in, if you got an underage or an accident, 
here you're doing everything in your part to make sure that you're containing it and trying to stop the removal of it from the property or handing it off it, it lowers your liability I mean because you're doing everything in your power and that's why if you see most places do that for that reason well, I don't think it's going to be a choice because his his dram shop or his insurance company is going to require it to be fenced as well. I would hope. I told yes. the festival committee that at the meeting on Monday night that probably not going to be an option to be fenced or not. So, and I would like to see it fenced with an entrance and an exit, and not just leave one side completely open because people will want kids yeah. will wander in and just a. Just if it's going to be a beer garden, it's a beer garden. It's operate. It's chaotic brewery, so it's local. They're going to whatever but as long as they follow the rules it's, it's fenced in I don't have a problem with it right. get the insurance we'd have to be listed as additional insured on their insurance yep. yeah so anyways that's what that is <coughs> just uh, letting you know that they've made their request and and you know if there are no objections I don't have an objection to it per se just making sure that we're doing it safely and I think we want to encourage vendors to come and you know I think the the food and beverage aspect of the city festival you know could be can be improved and that's I've seen that in a lot of places it's a draw. I mean, a lot of folks come for, you know, brat fest and they have a couple of beers and they have the brats or they do whatever. I'm going to push the brat thing until people start doing it. So that's, you know, the fair <laughs> thing. But uh, anyways, though, I, uh, I think it could be really nice. And I, like you said, we have a local, you know, uh, entity that's willing to do it. I think that's awesome. Good for them and, and probably good for the festival too. The lion sell brats at the festival. Yeah. Sure. Hundreds. Well, now we just got to put the lion the next to the beer garden and we'll be in good shape. Thousands of them. Right. So, you know, <laughs> this is a good... <laughs> You work here. on that, Tim. Yeah, well, I'll have to talk to Christine. Or you, you get on the committee. Uh, <laughs> Jan's our representative from City Hall here, so try to help you out there. All right. Any questions on any of that? All right. So I will expect we'll, we'll see a we'll see a permit for that come through at some point. But I'll let Christine know that there's uh, no objections from council. So yep. with a fencing requirement. Then all the other requests from festival will be at the next meeting for street closures and gets me. I'll wait till the engineers report, but. They're really wondering if the road will be open by the second weekend in August. The twelfth is it? The twelfth, thirteenth. August twelfth is the new com official completion date. Okay. Until the next the new completion date. Twelfth is the Saturday. So if it's completed and open on Sunday, well, we're, they're going to present two routes for the parade because the parade route goes down Second Street Northwest, and we can't usually close that. So Second and Second would have to be closed for the parade on that route. That's our detour route so we can't yeah. so I told the person around the parade I said you're gonna have to come up with an alternate route so 57 <laughs> yeah yeah no I mean, they'll just skip that and come no, on third I mean, instead of you can't get anywhere on it so just yeah. go down 57 so yeah there's gonna be there'll be multiple scenarios presented to be approved based on what happens at the time so anyway that's coming next time uh, administrators report sure uh, you've got my report in there, and we talked about a few things already here. Oh, um, hold on. Bring it up quick. Uh, let's see here. EMS, we had a good EMS meeting, talked about a lot of things, uh, planning and zoning. Ian briefed you on that. Uh, the cannabis issue. So we had talked about this. We actually had our public hearing on that draft um, short-term ordinance. So in the meantime, Rochester did have a uh, ordinance that they published that they discussed at their meeting and they're going to have it again at their next meeting. I know that some of the, the members of the council were interested in what Rochester is doing, some other communities are doing. So you could see that link to that article for the Post Bulletin. Fillmore County uh, just did pass a, a, a resolution as well. And mostly is what they're doing is they're barring any entities from sales until 2025. So, and I'm not sure exactly how that, you know, the state's not going to supposed to, it's not supposed to start issuing permits anyways and still that time frame but i think what they're doing is they're taking the maximum of time that they would have and pushing it out so they wouldn't have to actually allow it until 2025 so um if the council wanted to take action you know it's a they're very similar resolutions to some of the other communities like rochester's got the county um jim elmquist did indicate they were going to talk about it with their meetings he at this time did not think it was likely the county would take any action on this issue um so if the council and the city wanted to, to take any action, we would probably do that ourselves. Um, but certainly we'll be, you know, if the county does choose to do something, we'll certainly be glad to see what they have. Um, so that's interesting. And, and if there's any feedback, I'd be, I'd be glad to take that. Um, got the assembly meeting, uh, which was very interesting. Talked about a lot of things there as well, uh, including potential trail project, the Stillage Coach Trail um, with Al Roeder from Byron Ells, their 
admin over there, had a good talk with him about it, and I know Brandon's talked with the city engineer over there. There's some interest in kind of reviving that trail section, which would kind of run the north side of Byron from potentially from Oxbow all the way into our trail network, which would be a, would be a pretty attractive amenity, I think, for the community. So, um, so that'll be very interesting to see. I uh, wanted to highlight that um, we did get information. They'll be filling the water tower here in the next couple of uh, days. It's supposed to fill from the 17th to the 19th and we're not anticipating any interruptions to service. However, there may be some discoloration of water as that's uh, being done. So that's exciting. We'd like to have that done. The bacteria test will be done so that we'll be able to hopefully flip the switch here at the end of the month and uh, you know move on to the higher water pressure that we should have. Um, and then you've got an interesting report on capacity as well. I know we've talked about that a lot and I'd just like to pass these things along to you. Um, basically seeing the, cha the transition from firm power and natural gas coal turbines to the renewables um, and then it's interesting to see nationwide kind of the changes in future generating capacity in the different regions of the, of the country. So right now the uh, SPP has got a huge amount of solar that southwest power um, area and the northeast is the one that depends the most on uh, oil and natural gas so it's going to be just interesting to see how that comes forward. So, okay. Any questions for Tim? When they knock down the old one, will be allowed to go watch. I think they'll disassemble it and yeah, they'll, probably they'll use a crane to take it down. I don't think they're just going to just blow the door <laughs> post and let it fall. Well, I will say, you know, when one mon one Mingo <laughs> knocked their tower down, that's exactly what they did. They just pushed it over to the side yeah. and, and it. Well, because there wasn't anything around it, right. so they just they just pushed it, and it was a different style tower. I don't know. That was like, like a cinder silo, yeah. cylindrical t tower. But no, I, I suspect they'll take the ball off probably with a crane. And the, but yeah, if you'd like to watch that, I don't think the there's any one. reason you wouldn't well, be able I to. I wanted to watch tip over. So, yeah. Our luck could hit the new one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're a little too close to houses, I think. There, but <laughs> on, on that, is there access going to come off of Fifth into the new? Nope. It's gonna, we're going to eliminate the tower in the well house and then perpetuate the existing access. We did talk about coming off of 5th, but we just never really worked it out. So, so we'll just come in. Yep, same spot. Off of south, south, on the south yeah. side. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that, one time you the, talked about that. Yeah, yeah, but that well house that's there now that kind of splits the pit gate there, that's going to go away and we're going to rock that. So, Perfect. All right. Thank you. Engineer's report. <coughs> Project update. Yeah, so what we did mention the tower, so yeah, we're going to start filling that on Monday. Um, be good to go and be taking it down shortly thereafter. So it will be down in like a half a day. Those guys come in and take that stuff down pretty quickly. So let you uh, know when that happens. But we're going to get the new one up and running, wait some time, making sure that it works and whatnot, our controls and whatnot that we get to integrate in the tower, make sure that all, all that works. Uh, before we take that down. So I'll update you and read a little closer. Um, Safe routes to school, we're kind of finalizing that project 16th and 5th. We got that repaved in there, so we did some extra paving there because it's a pretty important intersection, so we're wrapping that up. Um, 57 was mentioned earlier in our roundabout up at 16th Street. Um, so the official completion date that MnDOT uh, just worked out with the contractor was August 12th. So I can ask them what the timing is for opening up the roadway because you said the 2nd and 2nd Northwest were the Official detour kind of is now. Yeah, it'll come down Fifth Avenue Northwest from the park area. Yep. It'll go Fifth Street to Fifth Avenue Northwest, down to Second Street Northwest, and it goes over to First, and then First, first back Avenue. up to the First Avenue back up to Seventh Park. That Second and First, that's our. You usually have those intersections closed for the parade. Well, sure. it's still the detour route. They're going to have to jig back up on Third. This is no big. They'll just have to shorten yeah. the parade back a couple blocks. It's not a big yeah. deal. That'd probably be the easiest. We just have to have our approval, so we'll, they'll present both as a. Sure. And and I can ask big. and see if it's going to be open by the twelfth. So. Be a great, you know, parade. Just run it up around the roundabout and back down. And oh man, have you seen some of the? Never mind. People pulling <laughs> floats. <laughs> we don't need them on a roundabout. <laughs> um, so that's. Update on the construction projects. Um, I guess other than Quick Trip, we did have a pre-construction meeting with Quick Trip, so they're going to be starting here in a couple of weeks. And their completion date is uh, December, so end of the year. So um, I don't know if you've been up there. The trucking company is gone, so it's an empty lot. So. Where did they go? Well, they're at three locations now. Town okay. Five, yeah. I saw that they're, the lot that they proposed to buy or whatever is still empty. Yeah, I don't know where he's temping his stuff yeah. out right now. Probably right? 05 or something. Probably 05 is where the trucks are. Massey is where the office is. And then Chester is where the... Mechanic shop is repair shop is. Mm -hmm. So he has three locations. Yeah. So 
They're coming. You say on the roundabout, so all 16th, Main, and 34, all in that August 12th. Yeah, so we told them if it's really truly a timeline issue and the 57 project, that if they want to allocate some of their crews downtown, thinking that the downtown, as soon as we can get that open, is probably more important than our 16th Street okay. roundabout. Um, you know, to get that open because we have businesses affected. The, you know, it'd be nice to have 16th Street open, no doubt. But I think the downtown no. allocating more time and effort down there is oh, more important. That's good. So, thank you. Um, we also did coordinate right. some private uh, mm -hmm. installations with 16th Street to get the quick trip service in there, and then also for the Perfect. shooting property to the southeast. So, um, he came in and installed some water and sewer, so that delayed us a little bit too. But we want to be most efficient, not tear the road back up. Uh, months from now just to get a water and sewer service in there so we worked with them on that so Perfect. the bar was pretty low though because the road was so yeah. rough down there from the county on <laughs> the facility they were um, that's constructed I think it is it open I don't know we just actually just talked I don't think it's open it's not it's open yet built they have a temporary road it should be all ready to rock yeah, so. there so you can access you can access yeah. down there yeah. off eighth. maybe if somebody doesn't know they have a reuse facility that is um, if somebody comes to the landfill to dispose of construction demolition it's useful they're going to send them down there to drop it off so to go to the um, have restore humanity reuse restore. facility restore in Rochester to be reused so um, they got a grant for that and we worked with them on a temporary road until we have 16th Street constructed so they did say today they would write their letter of support for uh, any funding opportunities for the 16th Street extension so uh, we didn't meet they just had equipment sitting on that road, so I don't know if they got the building open because they were. Yeah, there. it's. I mean, it's gone. I just drove up to it. The pond. The old yeah, that's part of our work with the pond work that we're finishing up. So, um, but the county should be ready to open. I would assume shortly. So, Perfect. yeah, everything's coming together. Just takes a little time. Great. Thank you. And then uh, your next one. Yeah, in your um, council packet is a. Uh, you like spreadsheets it's a pretty common <laughs> spreadsheet but uh, long story short or I'll boil it down is um, with the um, last uh, state improving of the gas tax increased our funding for municipal state aid money again that's on our larger heavier traveled roads so I think our funding there is going to go up uh, pretty significantly right now we get about three hundred forty thousand dollars a year um, by 2027 it's going to be four hundred twenty thousand a year so it's going to go up almost a hundred thousand dollars per year so I think that increases four percent twelve percent fifteen percent and seventeen percent all on top of each other so um, that'll be sweet to get that funding um, we did use that funding for our 16th Street roundabout with the idea that we're going to try to supplement through some other grants we did get a grant for the roundabout but we also used that for the remainder um, so that money is we borrowed ahead so as that recovers faster we'll have more money to do that extension that roadway if we can find some other funding opportunities to supplement so that's our direction moving forward and have stuff in front of you unless directed otherwise so um, and then there's also some other funding programs that we could potentially dip into that um, was funded through the through the state there so that is uh, in your council packet and feel like Excel spreadsheets dive in so perfect thanks Brandon any questions for Brandon okay. thank you sir nope thank you uh, nothing personal. Anything from our attorney? No. Nope. Any questions or comments on the uh, additional items? Just one note. We did receive two applications <coughs> for uh, cleaning staff, so we'll be doing uh, going through with them and, and seeing if we have one that's a little bit better than the other. And uh, hopefully, moving forward here in the next week or so, with uh, having that in house as the council directed at last meeting. So, perfect. Thank you. Can you explain to me what this SCDP? progress thing is I don't sure. understand any um, the folks um, from the small cities development block grant send out that report it's our basically the folks that uh, do our housing projects and we don't have an HRA in Casson so these uh, the folks from um, SEMCRA actually do the the housing pro program for us so we got a big grant they got the money they received the money now they give out loans for low-income folks who are fi fixing up the uh, their homes so they give us I I guess that's kind of what it is, Paul. They give us an update every quarter. So this is them telling us where they're people basically how they did in the last state. quarter or so. Yeah. Okay. Good. Anything else? Okay, we'll meet back here in two weeks. Everybody have a good couple of weeks. I'll look for an adjournment. I'll make that motion. Thanks. Stand up a second. Second. Thanks, Mel. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Oh. I missed the cow milking again.